Today in part two of my buying and selling your business series, we're gonna talk about letters of intent. Coming up right now. This is part two of a six part series. If you want to go back and watch the last one if you haven't seen it yet it talks about just the overview and everything we're gonna cover in this a little bit about kind of who I am I'm an attorney and I'm a CEO that's why I call myself the CEO attorney oh so the letter of intent is really a device that helps to save you from yourself in offers because it helps you to nail down what are the exact key terms and also, what things have to be true for each side to accept those terms, which are called contingencies. So I'm gonna walk you through the nine key parts of letters of intent. Number one, who is in the deal? What are the entities? Is it an individual? So you just need to make sure that your letter of intent is bargaining with the appropriate uh, party. So a lot of times what you can do is make it such that it's assignable to a new entity um, you know, there can be all kinds of conditions on this. Letters of intent generally, like all contracts, you know, there are templates, but you can do anything you want. It's all about figuring out the intent of the parties. The second part of letter of intent, the assets. What is it that you're buying? Is it equipment? Is it just the goodwill of the business? Are there trademarks or copyrights that you are buying? Uh, furniture, fixtures, all those fun things, real estate. You need to spell out exactly what it is that you are buying. Number three, excluded assets. So this is the good thing about asset purchase agreements as opposed to buying someone's entity. Uh, you don't take over their uh, liabilities. So this is the time where you expressly are stating that you're not taking over their liabilities. But sometimes the other party may negotiate for you to take over the liability and maybe give you a discount if you will take over some sort of debt that they have. So make sure that you cover that as well. Fourth is the offer itself for the price. So what are you willing to pay for this business, for these assets? Uh, you, you spell out exactly what the terms will be. You know, you offer a million dollars, $100,000 down, 900,000 payable over 10 years at 5% interest. And you know, you go to your you know, Google a business calculator or an amortization calculator and you type in the years and the interest rate and it'll spit out exactly what your um, and the amount and it'll it'll say exactly what your monthly payments are and then you can put that in the LOI very simple so this is where you cover what the purchase price is obviously that's one of the, the headlines of any deal so that's got to be in the LOI in the next video we will talk about negotiation strategy and purchase price is obviously a big part of that number five term that goes in an LOI deal specific miscellany isn't it fun to say miscellany that's a word I never say uh, very often but at any rate this is the material terms to you that may not be material to other people that you don't want to risk waiting until the asset purchase agreement the long form asset purchase agreement negotiation to uh, get locked in so if you have some sort of quirky request uh, that's really important to you. Maybe maybe it's important to you that, well, maybe not even quirky, but just a, a deal-specific request. So, you know, even if it's the owner staying on, you know, for a period of time and providing training, or maybe it's, uh, you know, there's a, a shed on the land and the owner really, really wants to tear down that shed and move it somewhere else. I don't know, something crazy that you wouldn't expect that needs to go in the deal. Make sure you're just communicating your expectations. That's really one of the key purposes of the LOI. The next one is contingencies, and this is my favorite part of letters of intent. This is uh, the part that makes them non-binding if certain things don't come true. So it's kind of, uh, the contingency part of, of the letter of intent is kind of like, uh, imagine if you're on a second date and you say to somebody, I would like to marry you if all of the following seven things are true, and you just start listing things out. Obviously, that's not going to work out for you too well. But that's pretty much what an LOI is. You just say, hey, I'll pay you this much for these things related to the business, so long as these things all come true. Now, just a little caveat on that. Uh, if, if it's a hot commodity, the business that you're trying to buy, uh, you know, 
you're not going to be able to just sort of uh, throw offers out there with a tons of contingencies because if you've got someone else that's got the same offer, same purchase price that you have and not as many contingencies, their deal is more real, right, to the seller. So uh, that's something to consider as well. But LOIs will allow you to put your contingencies in. The uh, most common contingencies that you see are a mutually agreeable, a mutually agreeable long form agreement. So agreeing on that long form asset purchase agreement with all the details in it. Uh, getting financing, so contingent upon bank financing, especially uh, if, you know, if the SBA is involved. Uh, other uh, contingencies are uh, you know, inspections coming back, uh, the equipment coming back, a, uh, the, the equipment being inspected, um, a review of the books and records of the business, all of those things, and then there may be additional things as well. So uh, you know, the thing about contingencies is both sides have to agree to them but uh, you know, if it's not a big deal to the other side, you know, then they'll throw it in because they're not going to expect it to stop the deal. Number seven is timelines. So this is again a communication device. So you want to let them know uh, exactly when you're expecting to close, when you're expecting to reach agreement on the long form uh, asset purchase agreement, and you, those can be contingencies and be in the contingency section or you can just have an expected timeline section and then that's it's sort of a little bit less official, but it's, again, you're communicating your expectations. Number eight, is the letter of intent binding or not when it comes to the material terms? So that's the whole point is for the material terms to be binding, but it's not binding if you don't uh, have wording in, in your letter of intent that actually says, the material terms in this agreement will be included in the long form agreement. You know, all the terms included in the LOI will be included in the long form agreement. Only additional supplemental uh, terms can be added. If you don't have that language in there, then the LOI is not really binding. They could kind of get out of it if they wanted to. And when I say they could kind of get out of it, I mean, maybe they could get out of it. Who knows? I mean, you want to litigate? You want to spend $200,000 to see? I don't know. I mean, it's. That's the thing with litigation is you just don't know. So uh, it's a serious document, but uh, I would act as if the, uh, you know, you can get out of it if some certain contingencies don't come true, but don't send an LOI in that you sign if you don't intend to honor the material terms. The ninth and final thing that I focus on in letters of intent is the expiration of the offer. So it's always gonna expire when you make another offer to them, a different offer. So you retract your previous offer, and now you have a new offer. So you're negotiating against yourself. Don't do that, right? Um, that, that's, we're gonna cover that in the negotiations uh, video. But the, you can also have a timeline for when the offer automatically expires. And that doesn't mean the deal's over. It just, it, again, you're communicating that you would like this to move forward quickly, and if, and if they wanna make moves, you know, they need to do it by the time that you put on the uh, on the date of the LOI. So again, those are the nine key terms that I focus on when dealing with letters of intent. And if you have questions about any of those, leave them in the comments and we will talk about negotiations next.